Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today we'll talk about components. A component is an element or a group of elements that can be reused across your project and help keep your whole design consistent. I have a component on my canvas right now, and you can tell it's a component because it's color-coded pink. So when I hover over it, it has this pink outline rather than the green outline that's associated with elements in Play. You can also tell because of this cube icon here. That indicates this is a component. And because it's filled in, it also indicates that this is the main component, which means this is the source of truth for all instances of the component. We'll talk about instances in a bit, but first let's talk about component states. So if I select this, you'll see this context bar and this dropdown will allow me to switch between two states. These two states are visually distinct and it can be useful to change the state through interactions to communicate user input. Now, if I wanna see all of the states at the same time, I can go into the main component editor. With a main component selected, I can just click on this pink arrow and that will take me into this main component editor. Like I said, now in the main component editor, you can see all of the states at the same time. And this allows you to see that there are some similarities and some differences between the states. We're gonna talk about how properties, structure, data, and interactions are handled across states in play. So first let's talk about properties. Properties can be different across states. So for example, in this default state, we have this background and we have a shadow. If I check out the shadow, you can see it has 10% opacity. In the collapse state, our shadow has 0% opacity. So that's already a difference in properties. We could also change the corner radius here and that can exist separately, or we could change the background color as well. And you can see the properties can stay different between the two and that's totally fine. Next, let's talk about the structure. The structure needs to be the same across all states in play. And it's not just that that's a best practice, you actually cannot change the structure in play across states. Now you might be saying, look at the default state. It has two additional text elements that the collapse state does not have. Well, the collapse state actually does have both of those elements if you check out the layers panel. They're just hidden here. I could show this title and now that exists in both states. It always did, but it was hidden. If you try to delete this, so let's say I don't want this title, press delete, instead of actually deleting it, it just hides it. Now that's different if you do it in the default state. You do this in the default state, press delete, it will be deleted from all states. In the same way that all states have to have the same elements within it, the order also has to be the same. So for example, if I show this title again and I use my arrow key to move it above that other element, you can see it does the same thing in the default state. So not only do the elements need to all be the same, they also need to be in the same order. Play again, we'll make sure that is the case. Next, let's talk about the data. The data also has to be the same across all of the states. So for example, this state says see more, the default state, and the collapse state also says see more. But let's say I wanted to have this say close in the default state. Well, I'll type that in. Instead of being different between the two states, it's going to carry across all of the states. The same thing is true if you have any images or any SF symbols. Now, the workaround here is to use an interaction, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. We'll use a set text interaction to change the state, or sorry, to change the text between states, and we'll use a set SF symbol interaction to change the SF symbol. Next, let's talk about interactions. Interactions in components also exist across all states. So you can see here, if I select my component in the default state, go into interaction mode, and then go into collapsed mode, you can see that that state is the exact same in both. If I make a change to one of the states, it's going to apply to both states. Now, if you want an interaction to apply in one state, not the other state, you can use a condition. So let's show that here. On my tap trigger, I'm gonna add a condition. And we're basically just gonna check if the current state is default. So here's the syntax here. We're gonna do self because this interaction is on the component. So we'll do self dot, and now we can find the current state by using the property current state. So if we're in the default state, this will equal default, but if we're in the collapsed state, this will equal collapsed. Now we're gonna check if it's equal to, by using that double equal sign, self again, again this component dot, instead of writing current state this time, we're gonna type in states. This is gonna give us a list of all the states. So now I do a period and here's our list. Let's check if the current state is default. 
So if it's true that the current state is default, then we wanna change that state to collapsed. So I'm gonna take the set state action and just drag it onto the top part of this condition. Instead of toggling between the two, we are gonna set this to be collapsed. And you can change the animation settings if you'd like. Now I'm going to duplicate this, Command D, and drag one of these set state actions onto the else section. So now if this is false, so the current state does not equal default, then we wanna set the state to be default. So here in this set state action, we're gonna do default. So now you can see as I tap on this, it's gonna switch back and forth between the two states. If I'm in the collapse state, tapping is gonna take me to the default state. If I'm in the default state, tapping is gonna take me to that collapse state. Now we also talked about the set text and set SF simple interactions. We'll add that on here as well. So if it's true that we're in the default state and we're switching to the collapse state, we want that word right here to say see more. So we'll add a set text action here. We need to target the see more and we just want it to say see more. I'm now gonna duplicate this, drag this one into the else section. And now when we're in this default state, instead of saying see more, we wanna say close or something like that. Great, so now as I switch between the two, you can see that that's changing. Now we'll also wanna do the same thing for the SS symbol. So let's add a set SS symbol action here. We're gonna target that icon and the symbol we'll choose is the one that's already in there. So I'm gonna chevron, there we go. And maybe we'll turn on a replace animation. Now again, I'm gonna duplicate that, drag this one into the else section and change some of the properties. When we're going to the default state, instead of being that chevron, we just want this to be an X. So let's find that X here and we can keep the interaction the same. So now let's put all that together. You can double tap to reset this and you can see all of that is changing at the same time. And that's how you'll manage the properties, which can be different across states the structure, which needs to be the same across states, the data, which need to be the same across states, and the interactions, which need to be the same across states. Next, let's talk about instances of the component. So I'm gonna go back to my page here. An instance of a component is just a copy of the component. So if I take my main component here and copy it, you can see this is an instance. In the layers panel, it's gonna have a hollowed out cube, and it's not gonna have the cube slash name in the canvas. Now, if I make any changes to the main component, let's say I change the height, that is going to be applied to all instances of this component. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see I have all of these components on my page. As I make this change, all of them are changing along with the main component. But if I make a change to the instance, let's say I change the background color here, that's not going to be applied to the main component. And if I wanted to reset it back to the main component, rather than just doing Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, which will work, you can also just reset overrides, and now it's gonna go back and match that main component. If I wanted to make a change, and I liked this change and wanted all components to have this change, then I could push that override. You can see that is when the main component will be updated, but I don't wanna do that here. So we're gonna go back and have this be the exact same as the main component. As you can see there, the properties can be different between the main component and the instance of the components. Now that said, we don't recommend that because the point of components is to keep things consistent across your design. So if the properties are different, it's not really that consistent. So again, it's possible, we don't recommend it. The data can be different across different instances. So now let's take a look at this page. You can see here that if I change this from January 16th to be January 20th, 2013 or 2012, sorry, that can exist at the same time as the same text element in a different instance has a different date. So the data can be different across instances. This is what allows you to make a whole list of things where the data is different. So you could have a list of all different restaurants, each of them have a different name, even though they're all the same component. Now, even though you can change the data on the instance, each of the instances states will still have that same data. So if I change this from collapse to the default state, it still says January 20th in all states of this component. 
the structure also has to be the same between all instances. You can do the exact same thing where you hide something. So I could hide the icon in this state or show it, but I couldn't delete it. If I tried to delete it here, you can see it just hides it the same way it did when we were talking about states just a moment ago. Interactions are also interesting with instances because they all inherit the main components interaction. So if I go into interaction mode and select one of these, you can see that it has the whole interaction we just set up and you can see it's at the component level. So I'm actually not able to adjust this at all. I could try to delete one of these. I could try to edit something. You see, I'm just totally blocked from it because it's inheriting this from the main component. If I wanna make a change to the whole interaction, gotta go back to that main component, make the change, and then it will be applied to all instances. But you can also add instance specific interactions. So in addition to this component interaction, I could add another one. Maybe I wanted to tap on this and I wanted it to take me to another page. This can exist in one instance, but that interaction will not exist in another. So again, all instances need to have the component, the main components interaction, but they can also have their own interactions there. And that's a brief overview of component states and component instances and what must be the same across the states and the instances and what is able to be varied to create some visual distinction. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope it helped you better understand why components in play work the way that they do.